Many people testified at the year-end public forum held by the Maine Citizen Trade Policy Commission December 4th in Bangor, Maine. The Citizens Trade Policy Commission was established by the legislature in May of 2004 to assess and monitor the legal and economic impacts of trade agreements on state and local laws, working conditions, and the business environment in Maine. It was also established to provide a mechanism for citizens and legislature, legislators to voice their concerns and recommendations to our congressional delegation. We're also very proud of the fact that we are the first uh, Citizens Trade Policy Commission in the nation, and we have, we have served as a model um, for other trade policy commissions that have subsequently been established by other legislat legislatures throughout the country. Good evening all, and a special hi to Malcolm, Elsie, and Paul. Um, I'm a geographer by training and a climate scientist by vocation, and currently I have a title, Presidential Professor of Sustainability Science at the University of Maine. Um, internationally, I've been part of the, the International Global Climate Assessments that share the Nobel Peace Prize. <coughs> Trade policy issues seriously affect our ability to reduce and cope with climate change. These issues can readily affect us here in Maine. The voice of the people must be heard. The need for this paradigm shift is clear to those of us who understand how trade agreements, multinational businesses, and the world's current economic troubles are directly and indirectly tied to climate change and the growing levels of poverty and hunger. Well, the Maine economy has always been reliant on its, uh, its natural resources, the forests, the fisheries. I'm uh, president of Local 12, uh, a now defunct Great Northern Paper Company at Millinocket. Congress needs to take a long look at the effects of the bills that are being passed, the NAFTA, the CAFTA. I can't believe that the authors of those bills could even recognize what's happening today because of them. I, it, I just, it just astounds me. And I'm, I'm uh, very honored to uh, be the director of the Bureau of Labor Education. And I stress honored because <coughs> I've worked with the Bureau for over 30 years in conducting labor education programs for Maine workers and organizations, both organized and unorganized throughout this fine state. And when I first started with the Bureau of Labor Education back in the 70s, early 70s, I'm dating myself with my gray hair anyway, but uh, paper was king in this state. We had mills all over the state. The finest paper in the world was made here, and the finest paper in the world is still being made here, okay? And yet, the paper industry is a shadow of itself, and not because of the courageous women and men who have worked hard in those mills, but what has happened has been because of NAFTA and other trade agreements. The Atlantica plan includes the building of more superhighways, pipelines, energy infrastructure, and more harmonization of the two borders, which threaten to do away with labor laws and environmental laws that are designed to protect our communities. It also erodes the local sovereignty of cities and rural areas to make their own decisions about what happens to their communities. One is a letter from Maine's State Attorney General dated 2002. <coughs> he expressed his concerns in his letter to Senator Olympia Snow and Senator Collins that these trade agreements would subvert the constitutional rights of American citizens for commerce. Commerce is important, but democracy is more important. Amen. Thank you. We mobilized, and um, with the help of your organization, uh, you were really able to clarify a lot of our concerns about the trade impacts of uh, doing business with a multinational corporation. A uh, very complex issue, but you really provided a lot of clarity for the citizens of Southern Maine. In Vermont, where Sarah, uh, Senator Ginny Lyons um, was trying to draft some legislation that would address some issues around electronic waste. There's a lot of different um, waste, waste streams. She received a letter from the Chinese government 
that essentially asked her to cancel or revise her bill because it conflicted with U.S. Um, commitments under the WTO. And, and she had a response, and I'd like to read just a short paragraph from that. The People's Republic of China questions the authority of the Vermont legislature to enact legislation to protect human life and the environment. This attempted interference by the People's Republic of China and the democratic process in Vermont is, an alarming, is alarming and in threatening the basic principles of our system of government. Common sense solutions to health issues at the state and local level should not be subjected to international pressure. And I couldn't agree more. So, uh, MSCA Local 1989 um, is a union that represents about 12,000 public sector uh, service employees in the state of Maine. Um, and we're here um, to express our concern on the World Trade Organization's ongoing negotiations over the General Agreement on Trade and Services, otherwise known as GATS. Um, <clears throat> we uh, always hear a great deal about the 24,000 jobs in Maine uh, that have already been lost since the passage of NAFTA. Uh, the truth is that we haven't really seen the end of uh, offshoring at all. Uh, estimates that a remaining 29% of U.S. jobs could be offshored, including high-paying uh, service jobs. Service jobs like office clerks, general office and administrative support workers, uh, computer system analysts, uh, computer programmers, data entry workers, all make the top list of jobs that are now most susceptible to outsourcing. Trade acts have been short-sighted and economically unsustainable. Uh, the folks at FAM, who I represent, Food Medicine, would like to urge the Commission to support the Fair Trade Act as a way to start moving forward. I urge everyone here to stay involved, educate their friends and relatives, and we need to pull together to change these acts to turn around our communities. Thank you. A few other states and local governments have become sweat-free, and there is a plan to form a sweat-free consortium. The state of Maine should be a leader in this effort. And I'm executive director with um, Sweat Free Community. We are a nonprofit, non governmental organization that um, is a coordinates a national network of uh, coalitions and grassroots campaigns that promote worker rights primarily through the vehicle of ethical government purchasing. Um, so please support the Trade Act. Um, the second one is please support Governor Balaji uh, in uh, promoting Maine's leadership in sweatshop-free public purchasing nationwide. This year I worked on farms in Union and Lincolnville. Um, and I, I, I definitely want to thank Congressman Michoud for uh, putting forth this bill. Um, so you heard a lot about the Trade Act. Uh, one of our concern as a trade working group, we're concerned about always being against these trade deals. We want to be proactive. That's what the Trade Act does. It sets out what a trade policy uh, should look like. It requires the Comptroller General to review all the past trade deals to find out whether or not they are in compliance with the Trade Act. And if they're not in compliance with the Trade Act, it will require the President to submit a renegotiated uh, plan uh, to Congress to make that trade uh, deal uh, compliant uh, with the Trade Act. It also sets up a committee made up of the chairs and ranking member of Committee of Jurisdiction uh, that are involved, such as the Agriculture Committee, uh, the Labor Committee, the Finance Committee. Uh, the other part of the Trade Act, having served uh, 22 years in the main legislature, I feel strongly about uh, you know state rights in, in the investment and procurement uh, provision under the Trade Act. It requires that no trade deal can uh, supersede a state law. Uh, that's up to the state legislatures and the governors uh, to deal with that. So I'm very pleased, uh, uh, particularly with that section as far as it, as it relates to uh, states. And my generation's the last person to ever make the same amount of money or more money than my father did. My kids are both college educated and they won't make the money I did. And some of the things that the, the folks talked about tonight uh, I would ask you to go on the web and go www.storyofstuff.com in a vacuum and uh, there's a, there's a uh, document, documentary uh, Trading Democracy by Bill Moyers. I'd ask uh, all you guys to look at that. Uh, that really invigorated me. And the, the greatest honor we have and most knowledge we get is from these public hearings folks and this has been uh, just 
phenomenal to have this many people stay this long to tell us everything that was on your mind, and I know it will help the commission going forward.